Hello LS students and welcome to a new screencast. Today's video is about the amplitude of a nerve's global potential and how this amplitude changes as a function of the intensity of stimulation applied to the nerve. Okay, so let's start. First, let me briefly explain the experimental setup that we're going to use. It's a simple setup, actually. We have a pair of stimulatory electrodes, S1 and S2, as shown over here. And then we have an oscilloscope, O1, right over here, with its recording electrode, R1, connected to the nerve, as shown in the figure. So the stimulations will be applied on the nerve with the help of electrodes S1 and S2 and the nerve's response will be recorded by the oscilloscope O1. Now, the intensity of stimulation will be increased after each trial. So we will start with the lowest intensity, I1, and then we're going to increase this intensity and apply a new stimulation with the intensity I2. And then the third stimulation will be with an even stronger intensity I3 and so on so forth. So that's how the experiment is going to be done. The results of the experiment, the results that the oscilloscope O1 recorded are shown in the document below. As you see, you do not have any biological response when an intensity I1 is applied, nor when I2 is applied. And the first biological response is actually recorded when I3 is used. So this is the first response of the nerve to stimulation I3. Okay? Mind that this response is called the nerve's global potential. Okay? It's not an action potential. The term action potential is actually reserved for it's uh, reserved for nerve fibers and the term global potential is used to designate a nerve's response. Okay? Now notice what happens when we increase the intensity of stimulation to I4. We get a new global potential with a higher amplitude. And then again, when we increase the intensity to I5, the amplitude of the global potential increases even more, as you can see over here. However, upon increasing the intensity of stimulation to I6, the amplitude of the global potential remains the same. It remains unchanged. So why is the global potential, why is the amplitude of the global potential increasing from I3 to I5 and then stabilizing and maintaining its maximum amplitude beyond I5? That's the main question we're going to answer in this video. Okay? So, before actually answering the question, let me review the structure of a nerve quickly and very briefly review the structure of a nerve. As you can see in this, in this figure, in this nice figure, the nerve is composed of bundles or fascicles of nerve fibers. Okay? So we have a lot of nerve fibers and the nerve itself is a cable-like entity with a lot of nerve fibers within it. Okay? Now, some of these fibers are myelinated, others may not be myelinated. Some are thin, others are a bit thick. They do not have to be identical. Okay? So, now that we have 
a clear understanding of what a nerve is composed of, let's move on to the actual experiment. I'm going to use a simulator to show you the experiment and its results. So let's go to the simulator. Okay, so in this simulator we have the nerve and we have the oscilloscope connected to this nerve and we can set the intensity of stimulation and then we can stimulate by simply clicking this button. The first stimulation with intensity I1 had no effect on the nerve. There is only a small artifact of stimulation on the oscilloscope's screen, but there is no global potential. So the intensity is now increased to the second value and a new stimulation is applied. Again, there is no global potential. However, when the intensity is increased again to I3 and the stimulation is applied, a global potential is recorded. Okay, now the yellow tracing you see on the oscilloscope is actually the previous recording, the one that was obtained with the intensity I2. It shows a resting potential, a flat line, while the new one with intensity I3 shows a global potential. Now, let's increase the intensity again to I4 and apply a new stimulation. Note that the amplitude of the global potential has increased. And note that the previous global potential is shown in faded yellow. Now, we're going to increase the intensity even more and make it I5 and apply a new stimulation. And again, the amplitude of the global potential increases as shown on the oscilloscope. And finally, we're going to increase the intensity to I6 and apply a new stimulation. But this time, the amplitude of the global potential remains the same. It doesn't increase anymore. So again, why is it that there's no amplitude, there's no global potential for intensities I1 and I2? And why is it that the amplitude of the global potential increases as the intensity of stimulation increases from I3 to I5? And then why does it remain constant beyond I5? These are the three questions we're going to try to answer in the following slide. Okay, so in this view, we have a virtual window into the nerve. Okay, it's not an actual tear in the wall of the nerve, it's simply a virtual window allowing us to see the inside of the nerve, allowing us to see the nerve fibers within this nerve. Okay, and I'm going to start by stimulating the nerve with the lowest intensity, I1. There's no response. There's no electrical activity, no action potentials in the fibers within this nerve. And the same goes for I2. There's no response, no activation of any fiber whatsoever in this nerve. However, when the intensity is increased to I3, and keep an eye on the fibers within this nerve, we have activation of some of the nerve fibers in this nerve. So this explains why for intensities I1 and I2 no global potential was observed. These intensities were so weak, they were so low that they had no effect, they were not efficient, they were not strong enough to activate any of the nerve's fibers. 
okay so these intensities i1 and i2 are actually less they are lower than the lowest threshold of fibers in this nerve even the most sensitive fibers in this nerve have a threshold that is higher than i2 and that's why there was no response when intensities i1 and i2 were applied to the nerve now for i3 it's different i3 is indeed strong enough to activate some of the fibers in this nerve that's why we saw a global potential now watch closely as i increase the intensity of stimulation to i4 and apply a new stimulation to the nerve watch closely the virtual window and see what happens more fibers were active when the intensity of stimulation was increased to i4 more nerve fibers in this nerve became active and this is why the amplitude of the global potential increased as you can see on the oscilloscope now watch closely as i increase the intensity even more to i5 and stimulate the nerve again all the fibers in the nerve were activated by i5 they were all excited by i5 so i5 is strong enough to excite all the fibers to activate all the fibers within this nerve and this explains the maximum amplitude of the global potential you can see on the oscilloscope now increasing the intensity of stimulation to i6 and applying a new stimulation it activates the same number of nerve fibers as i5 it activates all the fibers just like i5 did so the amp the amplitude of the global potential will be the same it will not increase anymore so the bottom line is the amplitude of the global potential is actually proportional to the number of nerve fibers activated by the stimulation the number of nerve fibers that are actually excited by the applied stimulation the higher the intensity of stimulation the higher this intensity of stimulation the more nerve fibers it recruits the more nerve fibers get activated until this intensity of stimulation reaches a value where all the fibers become activated at this point and starting from this point the amplitude of the global potential will not increase any further okay Keep this in mind the next time you come across recordings that show the response of a nerve to stimulations of increasing intensities. Thank you for watching and please let me know in the comment section if you have any questions or any suggestions. Goodbye.